Welcome to this tutorial showing you how to create a piece of artwork in response to the artist Temi Cocker. And um, I have already opened up a photograph of myself in Photopia. Um, apologies that I um, look so annoyed in the photo. I was just concentrating on getting my face as facing forward as I possibly could. And clearly con my concentration face looks very annoyed. Okay, first thing we're going to do is get the polygonal lasso tool, zoom in, and we're going to go round the whole of my head. Obviously, I'm doing this way too fast, just to show you in the tutorial. But you're going to take lots more time. And I'm going to go up, back up the other side until I get to my start point. I'm going to double click and then that's going to give me a mask all over my face. Okay. And then I want to go select inverse. So it's not selecting my face. It's selecting everything else now. Press delete and that deletes everything. Okay. Now I want to resize and centralize my image and I've already done that to save time on this piece so I'm happy with where this is now so now I'm going to image adjustments black and white I'm going to turn my image black and white and then I'm going to go image adjustments and brightness and contrast um, I don't have beautiful black skin like the models in Temi Cocker's work um, but I can do something about my pasty complexion. So I'm just going to ramp up the contrast and bring the brightness down a little bit just to give myself a bit more of a dramatic um, template or portrait to work on. Okay. Right, next up we need to worry about the background. So we're going to make a new layer. And I really want to have this pattern going on in the background. So I'm going to go and find myself one. So I'm going to go to Google, I'm going to type in brain patterns because it looks like brain patterns to me. Not exactly, but near enough. And so I'm going to go images and I'm going to check out something until I find something like it, like that. And then I'm going to, from that, try and work my way towards something, yeah, I think we're almost there. And yep, that one, that's the one I want. Okay, so I would save that image. Then, like I'm doing now, go to File, Open, and grab it out of the folder that I've saved it in. Right there. I'm then going to use the rectangular mask to select it. Control C to copy it. Then Control V to paste it into my portrait. It's hidden beneath me at the moment, so I'm going to turn off my top layer so I can see it. And I'm just going to resize it, holding shift to make sure it stays the same shape. And then I'm going to duplicate the layer. So right click on that layer, duplicate layer. And I'm going to grab the top handle of that and just stretch it down like that, flip it over. Okay. I'm not worried about this being exactly the same. As the top. Then I go back to the layer, click on merge down and that's going to merge those two layers together. Right, I don't want my background to be black and white so I want it to be colourful but sometimes with images that you find on the internet you can't be sure they're what they seem. So I'm just going to go to image adjustments posterize and just turn this down to two. So I'm absolutely sure that is just black and just white. Okay. It means that when I go to select color range and I click on the white, I am literally getting just the white masked off. Okay. Then I'm going to press delete and that's going to get rid of the white. And then I'm going to make a new layer down the bottom corner there. And I'm going to choose any colour, blue, and click the mask off. So there's no mask on there now. 
and then fill that layer with blue and I can drag that underneath the other. So I've already got black and blue now instead of black and white, but I don't want black. So I'm gonna go back to the black layer. I'm gonna go adjust, image adjustments, hue saturation. I'm gonna bring up the lightness. You might have seen me do this in another video. And then image adjustments, um, color balance and I'm going to whip up the blue and that's going to give me a dark blue rather than black okay and then I can do one last last bit of image adjustments hue saturation um, to really bring up the blue but also to lighten or darken it because the difference between the two colors in Temi Coker's work is very subtle so I wanted to do the same thing okay and so once I've finished, I merge those layers together and I now have my background layer and my portrait. Okay. Now's the time you can say, what color do I want my background to be? So image adjustments, hue saturation, and slide the hue slider anywhere you like. And you can have any combination of colors you like. Okay. I myself, am going to go for kind of turquoisey color. Something like that, a bit lighter, that'll do. Click OK. And that is my basic image done and dusted, portrait and background. Now I want to start putting some of those interesting features that Temi Koka has on his faces onto my face. So you can see something like this area of pattern here, this nice curved edge. Okay, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the pen tool and I'm going to go free pen and I'm going to bring the tolerance up quite a lot so it's more curvy. Okay, and then I'm going to make sure there's no fill so I press that X and for now I'm going to have a black line. Okay, and what I'm creating is a live shape so I can change this anytime I like after this event um, color wise. But you'll see I'm just literally drawing and you can see it's helping me out to make it quite smooth. And then I go back to my to my start point and there's my shape. OK, at the moment it's underneath my uh, portrait, so I just need to sort that. OK, but I'm going to go black fill. There it is then, realize that it's underneath that. So now I put it above my portrait and you can see I filled it with black, okay? Um, and if you keep it a live shape, then you can change the color anytime you like, all right? And now I'm gonna go back to the free pen, draw another shape. And because I've got black line with black fill still on, it does the same thing, but um, it's a whole new layer, so it's changeable. So I can go to red, there you go, change the red, keep the black line, okay? And then I can move that if I want to, things like that, okay? Right, so I'll keep drawing some more of those. So another one here. Make sure you join back up to the same point. Okay. And change that color to black as well. Then I'm gonna put uh, another shape, maybe overlapping that one. Just drawing it the same way. Making sure I join the two points. And then I can change the color. Okay, right now, another one over here. And maybe some in my beard. It's completely up to you where you put them. Might be quite difficult to see what I'm doing here. Always good to remember where you started. So it's easy to see, to connect the end points. And I'm just changing the colors on these ones. Right, now I want to put some pattern, like this kind of checkerboard pattern, into my work. 
So I'm going to put it into this big section up here on my forehead. So I'm going to go open and I'm going to get the checkerboard pattern that I saved from Google earlier. And I'm going to use the rectangular select to select the whole thing. And then I'm going to press control C to copy and then control V to paste. And you'll see it's painted it just below because it pastes it in the center of the image and I'm zoomed in at the moment. And then I'm going to I'm going to bring it up so I can see it, so it's above the layer that I want to put it on. And I'm going to, pressing shift to keep it the right shape, just shrink it down so it's just bigger than the shape below that I want to fill. Okay. Then I'm going to go to that layer with the shape on it, and I'm going to get the magic wand, and I'm going to click somewhere that isn't the shape. So I select everywhere around the shape, okay? Then I'm gonna go back to the layer with the checkerboard on and I'm gonna press delete and that's gonna get rid of everything, okay? While I'm here and while I've still got that mask on, I'm gonna to go to the arrow tool and I'm gonna drag this so I can just slip it sideways to reveal the black layer below so that I can have shadow. And then while I've still got this mask here, I can literally press delete on this layer and get rid of the excess that has slipped over the edge. So it's the same size again, okay? And with this red shape on top, as I said, they're live, so I can change them whenever I like, color-wise. In this instance, I want to make it orange, so I'm just gonna go to orange, click okay, and there we go, I've got an orange one, and I might move it now, just over the shape a bit more so they overlap okay and this is the joy of this you can move them anytime you like mess around with it right i'm going to put another pattern into this section here and i'm going to go with this kind of swirly pattern i'm just going to show you something else you can do is go to filter and distort and you can play with any of these things to change the pattern up a bit. So I've gone to waves and you'll see it's gone more wavy and you can make it way more wavy like that or a little bit more wavy. I think I'm gonna go with that, nice, click okay. So that's one way of changing the pattern without having to search the internet for lots. So I rectangular select this whole lot, control C to copy it and then control V to paste it into my image. Whoa, it's a big image. So we'll just grab it, shrink it down. Okay. There we go. Just gonna make sure it goes over the whole of that shape. No, I need to make, there we go, touch bigger. All right. And then same as last time, go back to the shape below. I'm just going to move them together so I know they're in the same place. It's all the way down, I think. Yeah, it's that one there. Okay. Let's go above the shape. There we go. So they're together, but we want them, we want to click on the one below. Magic wand anywhere but the shape so you've got the excess, everything else selected. Then back to your layer with the pattern on and press delete. And there you go, okay? And as I said last time, while you've still got the mask on, use the arrow tool to slip that wherever you want the shadow to be, and then press delete, and it's gonna get rid of that excess. Boom, okay? Now, I don't want this to be black and white. I've got a bit too much going on at the moment that's black and white, so I'm gonna make a new layer. I'm going to grab pink, because I love a bit of hot pink. Okay, and I'm going to, while the mask is there, I'm gonna select invert the mask so that it is literally the shape selected now. Okay, and I'm gonna fill that shape. All right, and then gonna go above to the drop down menu and just slide down until I find the one that I want. And I think that's good, nice but you could do something like that, but this is what I want, okay? So that's how to change the colors fairly swiftly, okay? 
Right, I'm going to go with this shape now. And I'm going to change the colour to black. So I have that shadow again that I need. And this particular shape I am going to fill with mm, some dots, spots. But I don't want them to be multicoloured like that. So I'm going to use the magic wand to select the white in that image. I'm going to go select invert so the spots are selected and then I'm going to press delete so I get rid of those and I create a new layer underneath and then make sure I've got rid of the mask so I use the rectangular mask and just deselect off of the picture and then I fill it with that hot pink doesn't matter what color I fill it with at the moment but I want one solid color and I merge those two layers together then use the rectangular select tool to select them. Control C to copy, Control V to paste in. And there it is. Okay, an arrow tool to move it, same as always, into position. Making sure it's a touch bigger than the layer below it. Then as before, magic wand anywhere on the layer below it to select everything else, back to the dot layer and press delete. And again, while the mask is there, arrow tool, slide it to wherever you want it to be. I'm gonna go the other way actually, I think, like that. Good. And then while the mask's there, press delete, it gets rid of that extra slippage, okay? So that is how to create shapes which look like they've got that nice hard shadow on them, so they look like holes. Okay, now everything is always eminently changeable. So image adjustments, hue saturation on this layer will let me change this from pink to something else. I think I'm gonna go with red. And I'll show you one more trick. Something you've probably have seen in a previous video. But if I double click on a layer, <clears throat> even a smart layer like this one, and I go to inner glow, change it to black, make sure it's on normal. Then I can use the size and distance sliders and change the opacity, things like that, to make more of a shadow that has gradient to it. Okay, so there's lots of different techniques. Right, so now I'm gonna put something in the eye and I'm going to use the swirl that I found earlier. Just typed swirl into Google and this popped up. And same as I have done before, rectangular select tool, control C, control V. And this has pasted in, but it's below where I need it to be. So I'm bringing it up layers wise to the top. And I'm going to have to zoom out a little bit, I think, because it's pasted in the middle. There it is. Okay, just gonna grab it with the arrow tool and I'm gonna resize it. Remember to hold shift when you resize so it doesn't stretch or squish. And put it where I want it with the swirl in the center of the pupil. And I'm gonna make that invisible for a minute by clicking the eye. And then on the same layer, it doesn't matter what layer on, I just need to be able to see the eye. I'm going to use the polygonal lasso tool. To make a shape, mask off an area. Click back. I'm still on the swirl layer, which is where I want to be. So I go select inverse. So I select everything else, not the eye. Press delete. And there I have a nice swirl in my eye. Okay. But I don't want this to be black and white, I want this to be a colour, so I'm going to create a new layer. I've already got the mask on there, but it's currently masking everything else, so I need to select inverse, so it goes back to masking the eye. And I'm going to fill that with yellow, I think, why not? Paste that, obviously that layer is above the swirl, so I now use the drop down menu and scroll down 
until I've got the color and the swirl showing. Okay, so I'll zoom out now and show you everything that I've done thus far. Okay, so you can see all the different shapes that I've created. But now I want to do these lines that are kind of around the shapes and swirl around the face. So I'm going to use the same tool as I did before. Zoom in a bit first. I'm going to use the free pen and I'm going to choose hot pink because I want to kind of complement the hot pinks that I've used before. Okay, and this time I'm going to have no fill. And as I said, I'm going to use the hot pink, but I want to change that pink to the pink that I just chose. So I'm going to do that. Click OK. OK, and now literally I just draw where I want my lines to be. And the same way as last time when I was drawing the shapes, the tool helps you to keep quite a smooth line. OK, once I'm done, I just click off. If you're not happy, you can undo that and redo it. But each time, just drawing what you want, where you want it, and those will appear. The same way as the shapes, each one of these lines is its own layer, so it's easy to delete the layer if you don't like the line. And in the same way as the shapes, it's easy to change the colours too. So it's completely up to you if you want to change the colours of these lines, okay? Um, put them anywhere you like. I'm going to put some in my beard. Add to the swirl of my beard. And as I say, you can put them anywhere you like. And you might add another colour. I'm just going to put some lines over my eyebrow, a bit like the artist does. Okay, now it might be that you find uh, these lines aren't really showing, I want to make them a bit thicker. So I'm going to select all the orange layers and either slide the slider at the top or type in, which I'm doing, I'm going to type in 8 and I'm going to change them to a thickness of 8. And I think I'm going to do that with my other lines as well. So I'm going to scroll down, grab all of the pink and yellow lines that I did. And the same thing. Just go to the box, type 8, press enter, and they've all gone thick too. Okay, so that really is it. Those are the techniques, the tools you need to create a piece of work in the style of Temi Coca. Obviously, with more time, you can add more elements. The choice is yours. Let me show you the one that I spent more time on. So this is the one that took me longer. And I'll just zoom in and you can see how I used all those same techniques that I've just shown you to create a piece with different patterns in, different shapes and different coloured lines. Okay, and that's the end of this tutorial. I hope you find it useful.